So we have another very special guest with us today, and it's none other than Leicester City's Brandon Cover. Brandon, how are you doing? How's the family doing? I'm all good, thank you. Yeah, we're all doing well. How are you? Doing well, thanks. Thanks uh, for asking. So first thing first, Brandon, um, when you hear football commentary, I've heard many different pronunciations of your last name. Is it Cover? Is it Cover? How is it pronounced? Cover, Cover. Cover. Okay, wonderful. Thank you very much. So firstly, let's get into a bit of your background. Um, so were you born in the Midlands, born in London? Whereabouts in the UK were you born? So I was born in uh, Colchester, and then I grew up in Leicester. And obviously now I play for Leicester City's Academy. Okay, wonderful. And in terms of your, your Jamaican background, is it your mom's dad? Is it your, your dad's side? Which part of the family? It's my dad's side and it's my grandma and my granddad. Okay, wonderful. And have you ever like spent holidays in, in Jamaica growing up? Uh, as of yet, no, but I will be soon. So okay. yeah, we'll be going back there soon. Wonderful, wonderful. I mean, do you know uh, where on the island um, your, your, your granddad is from? Whereabouts on the island? Yeah, they're, uh, they're both from St. Anne. Okay, okay, quite nice. The Garden Parish. Okay, Brandon, so let's talk a little bit about, you know, growing up. And would you say that uh, football was the only sport you played growing up or you played other sporting uh, events when you were young? Um, yeah, I'd say football was my only really sport that I really liked and enjoyed. But obviously, I did quite a lot of athletics when I was younger. So I think that really helped with my football. But overall, yeah, I think football was my main one. Okay, great. And would you say growing up that you experienced like a, a Jamaican culture in your household, an English culture, probably a mixture of both, really? Yeah, it was definitely a mixture of both. Because obviously, as I said, my granddad and my grandma were from Jamaica. So whenever I'd go um, around my dad's side, yeah, it was a lot of like Jamaican food, like Jamaican music, stuff like that. So yeah, and obviously with my mum's side, it was very like the English side. So yeah, I think I got the best of both worlds there. And growing up, were you always a midfielder or you played other positions on the field as well? Um, well, when you're younger, like you really tend to like play anywhere. But no, I think I always gravitated towards the uh, middle of the pitch. So now I think I was always a midfielder. OK. And in terms of like being discovered by, you know, scouts and being able to eventually come to Leicester, how did that journey sort of begin? Was it Sunday League? Was it when you're in secondary school? How did that come about? Yeah. So when I was seven, I got scouted by Leicester. But before that, I was just playing local football for my Sunday League team. So I played for a few uh, Sunday League teams, obviously, which you probably would never heard of. So no point in saying them. But um, yeah, I really enjoyed my time there. And then um, thankfully, Leicester City scouted me. And then ever since then, it's just it's been with Leicester. So I've been there for 12 years now and I'm 19. Yeah. And how has the journey been, you know, at Leicester when you're seeing, you know, a, a reggae boy in West Morgan lifting the Premier League title? You're seeing, yeah. you know... Damari Gray being playing at the club amongst, you know, other players of Jamaican heritage around and doing so well at Leicester, seeing all of that journey. Yeah. Now, it's great to look up to, really, just to see their progression. And it's really, like, it's inspired me to be like them, in a way. So, yeah, I just want to make my own mark in the football world now and hopefully with the Jamaican national team. So, hopefully, I could be one day, so, like an idol towards a little kids looking up to me. Yeah, of course, definitely. And tell me about that that process to, you know, get a Jamaican passport, you know, tell me how about how everything sort of went about and, you know, you eventually getting that passport. Yeah. Well, thankfully, my dad was over there in Jamaica, so it was much easier for me. It was a smooth uh, process, but it was still quite eventful because I had to send lots of things back and forth from England to Jamaica, like loads of little documents. But thankfully, he was over there so he could get everything sorted out and... um yeah, I think the process took around two and a half months to complete. But I'm just so thankful that I've got the passport now. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Very, very good. So in terms of, you know, so that Jamaicans can be able to understand you and, and where you play a bit better, would you consider yourself a central midfielder, a defensive midfielder? How would you describe yourself to persons that haven't had a chance to see you play as yet? I would say I'm a box-to-box -box midfielder. So in England, we'll call it a number eight. So box to box, I like to get up and down the pitch. I like to help out with uh, goals and assists, but I also like to track back and uh, defend. Just literally do everything on the pitch. That's what I like to do. I like to get involved with every little play. So yeah, yeah. that's me. And by chance, do you also play with Kevon Gray as well in, in the, the academy? Uh, I think he's a youngster. So no, I've never played with him. Yeah, he's a bit younger than around 15 thereabouts. But all right, yeah. no problem. And in relation to like Jamaica, uh, do you like 
for the reggae boys? Do you perhaps go on YouTube to watch some highlights or even catch some of the games when you can as well? Yeah, especially the last friendly game uh, against uh, Trinidad and Tobago. So I watched that game. I watched uh, both the... Because they played them home and away, I think. So, yeah. And um, yeah, I've been watching the Gold Cup, which is going to be coming up soon. So, yeah, I've been watching that. Um, they got their upcoming feature against USA. So I'll be looking forward to that. But, yeah. But, you know, just the relief to have the passport in your hands to know that, you know, you're you're one step closer and, you know, you're eligible to represent Jamaica. I'm sure for you that must be uh, an amazing feeling for you to know that it's just a, a call up away, really. <laughs> yeah, it's a real blessing for me to receive my Jamaican passport. It's a real honour. And now I'm just looking forward to hopefully representing Jamaica. And I just want to make uh, get my first senior cap for them. I'm uh, really looking forward to it. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, growing up or even right now, is there a reggae boy that you looked up to uh, as a role model or as an example or even somebody that plays your position, really, that you always admired as a player? I uh, wouldn't say he played my, plays my position, but I'd say Leon Bailey. He's a real good footballer. So obviously he's fast, skillful. And that's just something that uh, it just it just catches your eye when you watch the game. So, yeah, he's a really good, skillful player. I like watching him play. And when you see players like Michael Antonio, like Leon Bailey, like Bobby Reed, Omari Hutchinson playing in the Premier League, does that give you motivation as well? Well, these Jamaicans can make it. I can as well in the Premier League. Yeah, yeah. it's a real inspiration. And um, now I just want to hopefully inspire the youth now. And then hopefully I can be the role model they look up to. Yeah, another player that we spoke about quite recently is John Russell at Barnsley and the work that he's doing as well, uh, playing in yeah. midfield. Well, you know, your thoughts about him for playing for Jamaica. He made his debut against Mexico quite recently as well. Yeah, yeah, he's a really good player, obviously. Quite physical, strong. So hopefully I can link up and play with him when I'm over there. Looking forward to it. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good. Listen, Brandon, listen, thank you very much for your time. Really, really appreciate it. You know, you know, all the best in terms of what is left of the season at Leicester. And, you know, we look forward to seeing you in National Colours. Keep up the great work and, you know, the opportunity will come in time. Yeah. Thank you, Simon. Appreciate it. Thank you.